it is 1.30 a.m. or so. We're looking at 16 degrees in here, 17 degrees in forest tent, 15 promises and 10 outside. Do you really need a four season tent? If you would have asked me that a couple years ago, I probably would have said no for most situations. But after testing that theory, I have definitely changed my mind on it. There was a couple things that I overlooked, and one of the most important ones was actually heat retention. But before we dive into all of that, let's talk about what a four season tent actually means versus a three season tent. Uh, the name may be a little misleading, right? A three season tent sounds like you can use it for spring, summer, and fall. Four season tent sounds like you could use it for all of them, which you could, but primarily a four season tent is gonna be better off in the winter months. A three season tent is designed to be lightweight and breathable. A three season tent is designed, designed to avoid condensation so it's gonna have lots of ventilation, lots of mesh. It's gonna have thinner fabric than a four season tent. And it's sometimes gonna be quicker to set up, but with fewer guy line points and fewer opportunities to really reinforce that structure. A four season tent is designed to be a storm shelter. So because of that, you get a little more weight, you get a little less packability, and sometimes the setup is a little more difficult, but you've got a thicker fabric. You also get a lot of guy line points, a lot of opportunity to really stake that tent down uh, let it hold up to strong winds heavy snow it's designed to cover you in a true winter scenario one thing that three season tents have more of than a four season tent is ventilation so a four season tent will oftentimes condensate more but the trade-off there is a four season tent will retain heat because there's less wind moving through the tent and normally you have the option to zip up or close off all of your ventilation uh, to really keep that heat inside the tent. And that's really important, especially in a survival situation. If you fell in a creek or something and you need to warm up, you set up your tent and it's got tons of ventilation coming through. You got a 20 degree wind blowing straight through your tent. That's not going to be good for you. Whereas something like a four season tent, you can get that tent uh, 30 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature. A four season tent will often have the vestibule go completely down to the ground. Whereas a three season tent, you'll see it bow up and that's so that you can get more ventilation through the tent. I used to be under the mindset that in a three season tent, if you set it up properly, if you had good guy lines, if you found a good spot to place your tent uh, somewhere out of the elements a bit, you could use a three season tent for most situations. And that's somewhat true, but I've changed my viewpoint on that just because I've been in enough nasty situations with a three season tent where the extra two pounds, the extra space in my pack would have been 100% worth it to have a truly bomb proof tent up there with me versus something that I was just barely getting by with. One of the more unexpected moments uh, was on a recent goat hunt on the Kenai Peninsula. We flew in, hiked up the mountain, we were camping at Alpine for six days, I believe. And on day four, the rain came down hard. We had set up our tents in a spot that was a bit of a basin, but it was all super gravelly. So we assumed that it would drain well. We were out of the wind. We thought everything was great. We went out hunting that day, come back and it's just blowing sideways. Rain is pouring down and we get back to our tents and it's just like absolute storm. I literally had rain coming up through the tent onto the mesh and then into where I was sleeping. Austin actually had a four season tent. Jessica had a three season tent, but they got in a pretty bad situation. The water level rose high enough to where both of their sleeping bags were getting wet. They were literally sleeping in a lake. Uh, <clears throat> and that's where I say heat retention of a tent really matters. Because if you hop in that four season tent, even though your sleeping bag's wet, you know, you can dump the water out, move it, get back in your tent, and you've got protection from the elements. But if you do the same thing in a three season tent, you're going to be a lot colder. You're going to have that wind coming through constantly. Having a four season tent, having a true shelter like that does make a big difference when you truly need it. A little bit of a different example was on a uh, November Colorado mule deer hunt. And I had a little one pound, uh, one and a half pound Nemo tent that was not suited for those conditions, but we were going to do a single night. It was supposed to be nice. 
We're up about 12,000 feet, just camped out on top of a mountain scouting. We were gonna come down the next day. No big deal, right? We got set up and a huge snowstorm blew in and the snow was coming through the mesh of that little tent. I had to tie the guy lines off to like sticks and trees that were around us and we were still pretty sheltered. And I literally had my tripod set up in the tent to hold the tent up with all my gear around it to just try and give it some rigidity. Uh, I, needless to say, I didn't get much sleep. So if you're not sleeping well, the tent's not doing its job. Sure, I survived, but I don't wanna do that again. That was an absolute mistake. I was not prepared for that weather. Even though the forecast said it was good, it's November at 12,000 feet in Colorado. You should expect things to turn south pretty quick. So definitely should have brought a better tent on that one as well. So that's enough story time. Uh, we came up here, Forrest, Promise, and I, we've got three different tents in three different snow caves. Now, obviously this isn't the best test just because you've got this big barrier of snow. We didn't have much of an option. You kind of have to dig down to a solid layer in this snow here. Um, but what I did is I brought some thermometers and I brought, we put one thermometer in each person's tent and then one outside. And, Cause I was curious to see how the heat retention would be throughout the night. Now, what the big thing that I didn't realize was is there's no wind here tonight or last night. There was zero wind, it was dead still, clear night. So the actual temperature inside everyone's tent was about the same. Promise is in a Kuyu Mountain Star three season tent. Uh, Forest is in the Stone Glacier Sky Solus four season. And then I'm in the Hilleberg Acto four season. But given the fact that there was no wind, it really didn't make a ton of a difference. Hers was about two degrees colder, but both Forrest and I, uh, throughout the night at the coldest point of the night, the outside temperature was around 10 degrees. Our tents were 16 to 17 degrees. All right, we are measuring 31 degrees in my tent, 13 degrees outside. We're looking at 16 degrees in here, 17 degrees in Forrest tent, 15 promises and 10 outside. It is 6 a.m. Looks like it's warmed up a bit. We lost this guy, I don't know why. So in this situation, it didn't make a huge difference. But if you do have wind, if you do have extensive rain, it will make a huge difference. Um, just, just having that ventilation, having a tent that will be able to hold up to heavy winds too, that's a really big deal. The moral of the video, I guess, is overpack for your sleep system. Your tent is a part of staying warm. Your tent is a part of getting a good night's rest. Getting a good night's rest affects tomorrow's hunt. It affects, especially on a week long hunt, it affects four days from now. It really matters what your sleep system looks like, what you're coming back to, and having a quality tent is always worth the cost, always worth the wait. I have never gone somewhere and thought, man, I wish I wouldn't have packed an extra pound in my sleep system to get a good night's rest versus an acceptable night's rest. So that's my two cents, just thought I'd share. <clears throat> Again, I, like I said, I'm no expert on these things, but I've definitely learned the hard way on that one. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions on gear, give us a call. You can find our info at gearful.com. Thanks for watching.